Antinomy. We're back for one more, or two more episodes of Let's Play Night in the Woods. How are you feeling today? Yay. I'm feeling fine. You're feeling fine? Yeah. Yeah. So, in these last two episodes, we've hung out with Greg mm -hmm. for the majority of the game. Mm -hmm. And this is something that surprised me when I was playing through a second time to finish this LP. In the first playthrough, because we hung out with B a lot, we took control of her for this section where May was out of commission. Yes. But now, since we hang out with Greg so much, Greg is here, and we get to play as him. Ah, oh, no, that's surprising. It is surprising, especially because, you know, I didn't expect the developers to go through that little bit. Because oh. I figured B is irresponsible, and she's going to be walking around going, where's May, where's May? But Greg, Greg cares, man. Mm. He cares. I mean, he does in his own way. In his own way. I mean, his criminal way, but he wants to change. We know that. We know mm. that from the sheep story. He's like, you've got to let me go. Mm. I've got to grow up to be my own person. And he wants to be a better person with, uh, I always forget his name, the bear guy. Angus. 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 Yes. Yeah. So that's where the magic happens, I would assume. <laughs> I, is, they have a bunk bed. No, that's not a bunk bed. That's a, that's a bunk bed where the bottom bed was turned into a workstation. Yeah, but is that B's apartment or no, Greg's? No, it's Greg's apartment. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it makes sense that it's their bedroom. Yeah, exactly. What I'm curious about is that when we walked into the room there, they didn't have a chair for their computer. I wonder if they have a standing up workstation like you do with your with your house. Well, I, that is because like I, I no, I actually can't fit a desk in my room. It's just that after sitting at work for eight hours, I don't want to. Yes. Yeah. So we have an option here. Do we say skate and destroy or skate to create? And I figure we're a creative person, aren't we? Skate to create. Yes. Most important decision ever. <laughs> it's like, do you use your powers for good or for evil? <laughs> uh, Though, like, a lot of people, well, talking again about politics. No, go for it. A lot of people, like, use them for, like... Not really evil, but for their own selfish self interest. Yes. When you say when you say they use them for their own self, you're talking about political power. Political power, or like a, uh, I don't know how to say, creating laws that benefit the companies that they have vested interests in. I mean, we we do know that part of power. Actually, have you seen the rules for rulers video on YouTube? I was the one who recommended it to you. Yeah, I think it's, it's been around, but you recommended the dictator's handbook to me. Yes. Through the book itself. Yes. And I was going to say that he said the guy. The guy says corruption is a tool of power. Yes. And writing laws that benefit yourself, mm. or at least will benefit the people who put you into power, mm. is part of the deal, which sucks. That reminds me that probably like uh, Vladimir Putin is also beholden to other people in power in Russia. No one rules alone. You exactly. Know? Yeah. As much as you think he's got absolute power mm. and whatever, it's like no. As a matter of fact, you don't. It's all, as much as you want to maybe be, I'm my own man, mm. nobody rules me kind of thing, mm. we're all connected in some way. So what's happening here right now? What's happening here right now, uh, if you recall, like, the first time that May kind of goes, you know, the, she, she, she says, oh, I think the ghost is following me. Because if you recall at the end of the, the haunted house mm. investigation... Uh, May had a bit of a headache, and she's like, i got to meet everybody. I'm, I'm get freaking out here, right? Mm. So they all decide to go to the um, to the abandoned mine, yes. and there they find the cult, right? Yes. So they the cult spots them there, and they give chase, and May is shot at. Mm. And I think she goes – she doesn't get hit, but she I think she falls off a ravine and hits her head and goes into a coma or something. Mm. And basically, all of the, uh, the gang is like, holy shit, I think someone's trying to kill us. You know, let's just regroup and think about this, mm. you know? So we're just kind of like going, oh God, where is, is, is May okay? You know, are they chasing us? What's going on? So did they recover May? No, not yet. Not yet. Like, I think they all took flight in their own direction and they regrouped here because that's where they were last time. Mm. But May herself right now is missing. Mm. And they're like, oh God, is she okay? Is she dead? So, and they're not calling the police because... Maybe they figure they figure that some of the... Cult members are inside the police force. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what... Remember, like, earlier on in the mine... Well, maybe yeah, it's been a while since you've played, but I was going to say there's a bit in the mines where they say, you may not know who we are, but we know who you are. You never know who's a member of the cult. Yes. <laughs> oh. At, oh. Least, at least Greg and Angus... When, when Dee was talking to Angus, there was no exchanger about, you know, I love you, bug, and mm. what are we making... 
oh, you're making co- the brownies and lasagna. And mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, I gotta keep it fed. In this case, it's cool. Also, there's a bit here that it, since we hung out with Angus and we went to possum jump with him, we now learn that he actually didn't like Scout Camp, mm-hmm. Angus at least, because uh, it wasn't the most fun place from when you were a kid, and that's kind of sad. I mean, a lot of things when you're a kid, like, I mean, people or adults say, like, yeah, you should take advantage of your youth and all that, but, like, it's, it all depends on how, what kind of people you get surrounded with. Yeah, that's true. I yeah. mean, like, you can't, like the, the old, like, the old saying goes, you can pick your friends, you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. <laughs> I still don't get what that means. It just means that, like, picking your nose... I know you're, you're from Mexico, so the idiom to pick your nose just means to put your finger inside your nose. Yeah. And you can choose your friends. Like, you can pick mm. who your friends are. Mm. But you, it, the joke is you just can't put your nose into some, your finger on someone else's nose because that would be an invasion of, invasion of privacy. <laughs> mm, I would assume, yeah. Okay, so for this particular episode, viewers, I'm, I'm not going to be showing every single little bit of footage. I'm going to be splitting out things that haven't changed from the B... Root. Mm. I'm only showing bits and pieces of when Greg is the main friend, mm. what he says and how that slightly affects dialogue and pieces. And so don't be surprised you're going to see lots of dissolving and fading from one scene to another because, you know, I'm not going to be playing this game for, for sitting, making you sit through another three hours of uncut footage when all that changes is a couple of dialogue. They hear noises outside, but it's actually just me. Oh, cool. Kind of zombie-like, though. Well, she did kind of, like, wake up stunned from her coma. She was, you know, and then she's just like, oh, I'm feeling like crap, but I gotta go meet my friends. I've gotta go see what they're up to. She doesn't look good at all, though. (laughs) Yeah. Like you said. Though, like, I do finally see B with uh, open eyes. Yeah, she's always like, oh my god, it's like shocked eyes, huh? <laughs> Germ is always open eyed, though. Like, he's mm. just like, and I love how he's just still playing the video game. <laughs> when it's like May walks up, he's like, oh god, I'm half dead. And he's like, so just play my game. <laughs> yeah, like that, that's an hospital thing. I mean, maybe she has a concussion or something. Maybe. I don't know necessarily exactly what happened. Like, there was a bit of a scene where she goes to the church and everyone's kind of giving some sort of eulogy to her. And then later she's in a hospital. and But we don't know if this is a hallucination or if this is just bits and pieces of her consciousness flaking in while she's combed out mm. or comed out. Mm. But I do think what happened in reality, and I mm. put that in, in quotes, is she was shot at. I think she slipped, hit her head. And then maybe the cult members, because they couldn't catch the others, they were like, you know what, let's just say that they were, we're out hunting and we, we mistook her for a deer. We shot at her. She fell hit her head. And then she did go to the, cult, to the hospital and she was there for like a day. Mm. Because somehow I stumbled through from the ravine to the front of the house. You know, May collapses in front of the house. Next thing you know, she's in the bed. And then she wakes up off the bed and she just stumbles over here. Also, a little another bit of callback because we went to the uh, haunted house. Mm-hmm. May at one point made the joke saying, "When you want to speak silently, you say s's as f, so it's harder for people to hear you because apparently s has a very drawn out sound. People can hear you well. Mm-hmm. So B was like, "Hey guys, be quiet. We don't want to make her up." And then she's like, "Yeah," f. and it's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and it's like, "It's left noisy." <laughs> Greg cares, man. Yeah. He he remembers the weirdest things, but he cares. <laughs> uh. Yeah, see, they're so paranoid. They even don't think the delivery pizza guy is like, hey, is he a cult member? Is he safe? <laughs> I mean, you can never know. No. When there's a conspiracy, mm. everyone seems like an enemy. Yeah, we should like pull out our, like, how do you say, the aluminum hat? Foil hat? Yeah, tinfoil hats. Tinfoil hats. Tin, tinfoil yeah. hats. Pull out the, you know, are you a reploid? Let's put mm. on the Kurt Von, not the Kurt Vonnegut test, the Void mm. Kampf test to yes. ask about the turtle. <laughs> yeah, but reploids aren't those from Mega Man X? Replicants. No you, replicants. You mean replicants. Yes. So Repli something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have no clue, dude. It's I haven't really, I've only watched Blade Runner the one time, mm. and I've never really played Mega Man more than a Mega Man X. So. 
I mean, it's a it's a great game. It is a great game. Do like, have you seen the? You know the quote from Blade Runner, the one like uh, when the guy is about to die, the robot. Something I've like, seen. I've seen things you wouldn't believe. Yes. Yes. That they're all gone like tears in rain. Time to die. Time to die. <laughs> yeah. There's a Scooby version. A sc- of course there would be. A Shaggy. A sh- of course there would be a Shaggy version. Mm. I mean, I don't know how the Shaggy meme became so popular. <laughs> I mean, it's one of the memes that doesn't bother me. Because like some memes are like, eh, I don't get it or care about it. But Shaggy, Shaggy is Shaggy. Did you ever like Scooby-Doo as a kid? I mean, I liked it, but I was very annoyed by the fact that there were so few episodes. Are you kidding? I hated Scooby-Doo. I really didn't like the original Hanna-Barbera version. I mean, I thought Daphne and Belma were hot. Well, so did everybody else. I think Maybe that's part of the reason why all boys watch it, because like, hey, they're cute. Either yeah. you're with the nerdy with the girl with the glasses or the redhead, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Though, like, when I was a kid, like, oh, Daphne, but now that I'm an adult, Daphne or Velma, they're they're both fine. They're both fine, yeah. It's like, hey, my, my tastes have expanded. Yes. <laughs> oh. And how, that reminds me, like, what were your cartoon crushes when you were a kid? My cartoon crushes when I was a kid? Um, who, uh, Shitara, I think, from Thundercats? That's a classic. Uh, did I like, well, they were not cartoons, but the, the Power Rangers... Like the two girl Power Rangers. I yes. liked them quite a bit. Uh, it was Trini and uh, the Pink Ranger, whose name I don't remember. Kim, right? Was Kimberly? Kim- Kimberly, was that her actor? The actress or the character? She. It sounds like her character name. Sounds like a character name, yeah. So, Shitara, uh, Kimberly, or and, and, and uh, what was it? T- T- Trini. Trini. Um... Oh wait, I don't want to. I would love to keep talking about our our cartoon crushes when we were kids, but at this point, like because we didn't hang out with B, mm. she's just like she doesn't consider us like the sister that the closest thing she had to a sister. Mm. In this hangout, because Greg was our main care was our main friend, B's just like I think eh, you're eh to me. Oh, not not that's because that, she's like because because like we should hang out more, and then B May, May was just like I thought you'd find me really annoying. And B's just like, eh. And, it's just, ah. and May's like, I'll, I'll take eh. I'll take that, you know? <laughs> okay, so there's like a possibility of like getting closer together again. Yeah, I mean, but like I said, I do want to consider like the B route the, the best route. Yes. Because Greg, as much as Greg and May were super best friends when they were kids, and B was kind of a good friend, but wasn't as close as these two were, mm. you know, it's it's... It's like revisiting your best friend and trying to rekindle something when you're both matured. And, yeah, it's fair that they're both, like, really tight still mm. after she went off to college and all that. But at the same time, it's like, B needs you, man. Yes. B needs you. She needs us. Yes. <laughs> so, in the original playthrough, of course, if B was our best friend, B would be the one we're sharing the couch with. Mm. But now... We're swapping tales with Greg. In this case, it's just a retread of the conversation when May explains why she beat down mm. uh, she beat down the uh, the kid six years ago, and then Greg, because they were closer, because they were friends throughout this period, they have a bit of extra dialogue. Like at this case, May, May is talking about remember that visual novel game we used to play with the with the with the monsters, and Greg's like, "Yeah, it had that hot skeleton." And I was like, "Wait, are we talking about Undertale? What?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not talking about Undertale, but it would be funny if they did. Speaking of visual novels, like I played like a uh, Hat the Full Boyfriend. How was that? It took an unexpected turn. Really? Yes. They were all, but they're all pigeon boyfriends, right? Yes, but I recommend that you play it. I do know. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to say what I know of the game because I don't want to spoil it for anyone who's never played it. Mm. But as I mean, it's a dating sim, though, isn't it? It is. But there's more to it. There's more to it. I and I know I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say it off camera, or at least when this episode's over, I want to ask you later mm-hmm. on: Is this the twist you were talking about? And you can tell me if I'm right, or if that's not the twist I was thinking of. And mm-hmm. there's another one on top of that. <laughs> I'll ask you later. All right. I'll ask you later. Remind me. Um, 
one thing though, I think I do appreciate from this particular hangout with Greg or this particular tete a tete mm-hmm. is that B was a lot more like, "Holy shit, you should see a doctor." Greg is a lot more receptive. I mean, both in a good and a bad way because mm-hmm. he does things things like, you know, I beat down Andy Cullen and he's thought, "I thought he was an asshole." And May's like, "We never even met him. I don't think he deserved the beat down." <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, fair." You know? <laughs> or it's like, "I played the visual novel." And he's like, "Yeah, I had that hot scout and I played it too." You know, like he kind of has May talking more, mm. but at the same time, you know, it's like, I beat down that kid. He deserved it. No, he didn't. You're yeah. right. You know, <laughs> It's like he's trying to say to her, no, it's okay. Mm. It's okay that you almost killed a kid. Mm. He's probably deserving it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, he doesn't question her. No, he doesn't. And I guess... Uh, it's like it's like the pierogi mini game. It's like open your mouth, mm. just trust me. And mm. it's like true friendship is this: when your friends say something, you trust them one hundred percent, both good and bad. Yeah, but up to a point, it's like, like, dude, like I trust you, but like, is this the right option? Is this the right? Like, should you ever challenge your friends when they say something dumb or stupid or wrong? You should. You should. Of course. I agree yeah. with you completely. That was a bit of a rhetorical question for uh, us. But, uh, uh, yes. I mean, if you're out there and you're like, oh, you know, should I tell my best friend or should I tell some friend that something they said or said or did was probably hurting them in some way or it was bad in some way. And it's like, yeah, tell them, tell them you're making it's, – it's wrong or it's mm. making you uncomfortable but because you're making them better people. Yeah. You know, just because you're friends doesn't mean that they get a pass when they're acting shitty or saying things that mm. – are bad because it's like, but the friendship and it's like, you can, if your friendship is strong, it'll survive one or two saying, saying, Hey dude, what you said, not cool. You know? Yeah. And if they're like unwilling to budge, then maybe that's how it goes. Yeah. And I mean, that's when you be like, well, okay, if you're unwilling to budge on this, that's fine. As long as, you know, as long as it's not something that's a deal breaker for you, you know? Yeah. Like going full 4chan. Yeah. <laughs> Going full 4chan and then going like, I don't, I don't, I was being sarcastic, dude. Or that was just a joke, man. I'm just memeing at you. And that, that gets my goats. That yeah. rustles my jimmies to use an old meme, you know? Because it's like, no, man. Who is it? Kurt Vonnegut said, we are who we pretend to be. Mm. And then that's fair enough. Because, you know, they say like, hey, you want to be a better person? Start acting like it. Like Gandhi, be the change you want to see in the world. Mm. If you're going to be jo- living your life jokingly through and saying, I don't really, I don't have any beliefs. I just believe. And what am I truly believing? I'm not going to tell you. Mm. And it's like, no, you don't, you don't really deserve my attention or my time. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, what did you say just now? Like before, like the, your current statement? You mean when I was talking about uh, them hanging out together and then how you No, no, just now, just now. Oh, about oh, like when you say people don't deserve their your time or attention if they don't believe what they say they believe, or if they won't tell you what they believe. I don't know. I just lost lost track. Lost anyway. track. Chain thought. Yeah, <laughs> it's like this. You're just paying attention to the conversation of me and Greg. While in one ear, not the other. It's like right. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> no, I'm also thinking about my own cartoon crushes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Going back to that, then. What else? What else for your cartoon? Who is it? Actually, before you say anything else. Do you, do you remember there was I think who was it? It was a famous actor. He was on a he was on a talk show, and then yes. he said that he liked Nala from The Lion King. Yes, and he was like, "Wow, I had a bit of a crush on her," you know. And it's like it's because it goes those eyes, man. Yeah, those sultry eyes. <laughs> those sultry eyes, and I'm like, I think we all had that at one period of other with some some object of desire that today we were like, "No, I'm not, I'm totally not into that." But back then, your little brain was like. That's hot. I mean, <laughs> when you're a kid and you're like, when I grow up, I want to marry my dog. Yeah, yeah, or at least my dog is my best friend. Yeah. You know, then that's that's true when you're a kid. Not true when you're 20. True when you're 30. Yeah. <laughs> my dog is my best friend. <laughs> and speaking of cartoon crushes, like, uh, what was the name of that mouse in uh, uh, the Rescue Rangers? Yes. It was a gadget. Gadget that gadget. she has a cult in Russia. Yes, she does, and that's so freaking weird, man. I think I think those are like the proto furry kind of like conferences, but instead of you know, because in Russia apparently you can't go out like that or they'll shoot you. I'm just saying, I don't know if that's true. Or well, not. Well, it is a very macho country. It is, it is. So it's like we only like you know uh, standard like stuff, standard stuff, and it's like, well, well, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm pretty sure 
Oh, human humans are humans everywhere. Yeah, we're all we all have a fucked up view of sexuality of kinks or others mm. that you know just go out there. Yeah, <laughs> and so people like uh, there's like furries, scalies, dragons, fucking cars. Yes, and then and then today we you know I think I read a uh, I read a post on Reddit or something that was like I'm an artist who actually tries to draw serious stuff, but if I want money. I draw some smut. I draw the weirdest fucking shit, and he hates it, or she hates it. I don't know if it's uh, you know, the gender of the person who who made this post, but it's like one of those is like, that's how I get my money, and it's it's it, they say I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter, like what gender you are. Like you can be like equally disgusted. Though I will say that I wish I was able to draw myself. Is that way you could get some of that sweet sweet money. Yes, that like swing like the. What was that thing? It's like shitting dick nipples? Yes. The old original meme. Yes. Of the weird shit. It's like, what the fuck? I've never seen it like uh, full screen. Only thumbnails. That was, and I was already disgusted. Yeah, enough. I was like, I don't want to zoom in on this. I just really don't. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love how we've been talking about this shit while Mae's been bearing her heart out to Greg and saying like, I'm broken, man. He's like, I'm here for you. And it's almost like we're both sitting in the same room and as they're having this really heartfelt discussion, we're like... Memes and yeah. cartoons and <laughs> cartoon crushes. Cartoon crushes. It's like ah, the cycle of life. <laughs> uh, which reminds me, like one of my earliest cartoon crushes was like a, I think Shun Rei from Shun Rei from Knights of the Zodiac. Uh, oh she yes. She used like a uh, friend. Mentor? Was it the mentor or was it the other one? That girl that is with Shiryu when he's training. Right. It's been a while since I've watched Knights of the Zodiac. For those of you not know, Knights of the Zodiac was huge in Latin America. I think it still is. It's it's yes. one of those animes that really didn't get much of a grip in the United States or I Canada. I think it started in the early 2000s, and by that point, like uh, Dragon Ball Z was in full swing. So oh no, I think it, Dragon Ball Z is a universal thing. Everybody, everyone loves Dragon Ball Z. Yes. But there are some anime from the 80s and 90s that some countries, I suppose, adopt, mm. and others just like, eh. I don't really care for that. Mm. Like in Argentina, Detective Conan is huge. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. And uh, in Brazil, Knights of the Zodiac. I'm not sure what animes would be hot from the 80s and 90s other than Dragon Ball. Sailor Moon, maybe. Sailor Moon, I think, is the big one in the United States and Canada. Yes. And apparently a shitload of like Canadian cartoons like Cyber 6, which you showed me last time. Which yes. other countries are like, I'm sorry, what is this? Yeah, but like <laughs> it has such a cool intro. That it does. If you guys have never watched the Cyber 6 intro, if you've never heard about it, just go on YouTube and just type up Cyber 6 intro. You're going to be like, wow, this is like some good looking stuff, man. And then you'll immediately think, where is the full song? And then realize there is no full song. There is no full song? Well, there is and there isn't. There is because apparently it was written and recorded, but due to like the company holding the rights, said that they will never publish it for reasons. Really? I don't get why. Like, if people are willing to pay for it, I mean, why not? For sure. So, just to go back to the game mm. a little bit, since uh, we, I, I think this is the one episode where we've been really meandering in our conversations, because it's things we've seen already, or at least we've seen bits of this. Also, it's slow. It's a bit slow, because it's going to get imp more important later on when we do the final episode where they actually have a serious conversation. In this case, it's just like friends trying to support each other and being like, I believe you, man. Mm. I, I, I'm inside of you. I, I, not I'm inside of you. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> I, 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 I'm inside your mind. You know, yeah. I know how you're feeling kind of mm. thing. And in this case, it's basically Greg being a lot more... I think B was a lot more like, you know, don't, no, don't go out there and throw your life away. Greg is like, I love you, man. Don't leave me here. You know? <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lose you. Uh, I mean, they're both heartfelt in their own way. They are. I mean... Like, like Greg is like a... How do you say? Like a childhood friend. Yeah. Who's like, I've known you since you were born or mm -hmm. whatever. And B is like, we've rekindled. Yes. And they're both afraid for me. Yeah, that they are. That they are. In their own way. Mm. Like, Greg is a lot more like... Yo, man, no matter what, I'll follow you to the ends of the earth. And B's like, let's be responsible about this. Yes. <laughs> and I agree with B more. I know. I think we all do. I think, I mean, nothing against Greg. Greg is a good guy. He's a good friend. But I think 
most of us are gonna be like B's B's the top tier here. <laughs> yeah, like Greg is a bit like it's a bit like a bull in a china shop. Yeah, you know what? I think May's the bull in the china shop. Greg mm. is just the guy who owns the china shop. Going, uh. Go crazy, man. I mean, he's the one who works in the Snack Falcon mm. being like, hey, let's go smash some light bulbs. And May's like, yes. <laughs> or, or maybe Greg is the person on top of the bull. <laughs> it's like, get him, man. <laughs> smash it up. Rodeo it up. Meanwhile, B is the person who owns the china shop. Like, my, my china. My china. <laughs> yeah. She owns it. Yeah. Greg works at the shop. B owns it. May's the bull, and Angus is just looking out and going, "Oh my god, my boyfriend is an idiot." Mm. <laughs> break, letting you know things, letting you know, things, letting things break. Uh, so yeah, the rest of this episode is basically, like I said, uh, small changes in conversation, small changes in dialogue that I at least picked up on from the playthrough, where it's like this seems different. Mm. So if you guys are looking for a hundred percent true completionist run of the changes dialogue you're probably not going to get this here because there's chances are i didn't record one or two lines that changed or were spoken in a different order because i'm here for the substance not the not every single line of dialogue hey well i'm already surprised that you did it like uh like the two what do you say the, the two, two paths the two paths because usually i just play the one and like eh, i'm you, done you know <laughs> Let's go die or something, but hopefully not. <laughs> See, that's still Greg. That's still Greg's me. Like, I'll follow you to death, mm. but hopefully not. Yeah, I don't, don't want to die. But in any case, you were mentioning that you've never you never play a game twice. When Very there's rarely. Branching paths. When there's branching paths, really? Rarely. I mean, if it's a visual novel, that's the whole point, and you can skip whatever you've already seen. Yes. I mean, I think that this is one, if there's one criticism I have of this particular game, it's. Oh, yeah, by the way, because we hang out with Greg for the fourth time, we made a legend, we, we left a robot out there. Mm. And then and then B's like, what the fuck what are you guys talking about? <laughs> it's been a weird few days, okay, B? Don't, uh. don't, don't push me. <laughs> but uh, She probably feels bad uh, as an outsider up to a point. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, God, you really don't know, do you? Yeah, uh, like, yeah, you have your own thing, I want to be part of that thing, too. Yeah. <laughs> In any case, uh, I was going to say that you... If there's one criticism I have of this particular game, and I love the Weird Autumn Edition for adding so much more to do, mm. but I really, you know, Scott, Alec, Bethany, if you guys are listening, the creators of the game, mm. the main creators, please, if you do an update, please add a chapter select. Mm. Please just let us, you know, if we completed the game once, let us just skip to a certain day to do something there. Yeah, like choose like the pa the part of the branching path that you want. Yeah, and I think most games need to do that. Yeah. Most games need to include that because. There are games that I don't play twice if it's like you have the good ending and the evil ending. And mm. I, I really, I don't know about you, but I, I really can't bring myself to do evil things to be psychotic. I mean, not right now, but like when I was younger, I used to do that with Knights of the Old Republic. Oh yeah, you were the dark side? Well, first, good guy, then evil woman for some reason. Always the evil woman. <laughs> and then and the, uh, the next game, I was like, nice woman, evil guy. Nice woman, evil guy. So what we're doing here is like, uh, because Greg is our main friend, he's the one who tries to pull us away from the miner. Oh, he's wow. the one helping, helping Angus. You know, because the true friend rescues the friend. Mm. You know, the true friend rescues me. And there's another, the cave-in once again, and, uh, you know, when when B is the one cradling May or whatever, going like, May, you okay, mm. May? You know, and in this case, uh, when she starts laughing, you know, you'll see his, Greg's reaction is actually something like, okay, I don't know if he's just as nervous as, as May is, or if this is just how he, he's like, hey, she's laughing, let me laugh too, <laughs> you know, it's like, ha ha ha, you know, uh, yeah, he's just like, uh, yeah, maybe they're just one, one Brian is like, why are we laughing, B is like, why are we laughing, we just killed a dude, we call it, cause the cave in, I'm with B. Yeah, you're the. Why are you laughing? I mean, May, May you can understand because she's had a near death experience yeah. th for the third time, mm. you know? And then Greg is like, Why are you laughing, Greg? <laughs> it's a bit like going to a funeral, and then you're in a funeral, you can't help but laugh sometimes, you giggle. It's like inappropriate laughter I situations. Would say more when, like, you're getting told off by your parents. And then you start laughing or giggling, and it's like, eh, and I'm super nervous, but this is my reaction. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll get back to you for the next episode about the whole good path, evil path, mm. or playing the game twice. 
Um, in this particular part here, of course, after we survive, when we go back home, if we were B's best friend, May starts talking about B. She starts talking about how some things she learned and all that stuff. But since we hung out with Ang uh, with Greg mm. and Angus, May's conversation here, her, I guess, epiphany, mm. is a little different from what happened with B. Because I think they do learn different lessons. She learns different lessons from different friends. Mm. In this case, she's talking about how she doesn't understand life. And she... Control of the world. What does Greg not have? Control? Control. Well, he has no self-control. Ah. He's just like, yeah, let's go wild, mm. man. You know, and then she starts talking about walking to horrible stuff that was already happening, like a sheep. Mm. You know, I think that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, like, metatextual commentary here for me. Uh, to talk about about them you can connect things because again Angus is all about patterns and connecting things mm. so I think May is the one who's like I've learned I've learned something today and here's what I've learned look you both know? ways before crossing the street yeah that's a really nice sensation mm. Kind of kill that guy to save me. <laughs> she also says this about for me. Don't think I didn't appreciate that. Ah, uh, yeah. L O L. <laughs> Murder friends. Murder friends. <laughs> Murder friends. Uh, do people ever get a handle on what's happening in their own life? Not all the time. Sometimes it's like, why is my life shit? Yeah. Why is it that? But then again, sometimes I think about how, like, I mean, I could be living in North Korea. Yeah. When you say, by comparison, I wish, you know, a Darfur war or whatever wishes they were they were in my shoes, you know? Mm. Uh. Or, or one of those, like, horrible dictatorships in, like, uh, some place in, I don't know. Where are the, what are the worst dictatorships currently? Currently? Yes. Uh, I'm pretty sure, like, well, I mean, depends if you count Venezuela one, but uh, there is, uh, there are quite a few of them in, um, in Africa. Yeah. There is a couple, I, I'm assuming, you know, if you consider Russia a bit of a dictatorship, you wouldn't be that far off. An extreme oligarchy. Yeah. Like, remember, any 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 country where money is, where wealth is drug, dug out of the ground, that's a bad place to be. Yeah. That's from the book, right? It is from the book. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those are rulers. No, that's the dictator's handbook. handbook. Yes. The, the You're right. Rules for Rulers is the YouTube video. I think I pretty much love Greg more than anyone ever. Oh, oh B! Oh, B! I don't know if better friends exist. Oh, no! <laughs> no, it's fine. We're like old shoes that go together. Well, I'm sorry I caused the drama between you and Angus, man. Meanwhile, uh, like, B's, like, left there with being that left shoe, and that's it. Yeah, Angus, I give you Greg as a gift. Uh, Remember to water <laughs> and feed him. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's nice. It is nice. If you ever hurt him, I'll kick your ass into the ground. <laughs> That's See? two. Yeah. It's, um... What was it? Uh, he was mine first. <laughs> Cute. Yep. There it is. There it is. All right. So, this is the uh, end of the penultimate Let's Play of Night in the Woods episode. Mm -hmm. We have one more to go where we hang out with Greg for the final conversation, the final heart-to-heart. -heart. Mm. So... Antinomy, I hope that you can join me for that one as well. Who knows? Who knows? It's it's it depends on the sky. Exactly. <laughs>